to junior developers, you're in for a long road. If you're learning how to code right now, trying to get your first foot in the door, I want to tell you, that's going to be one of the hardest things that you'll ever do. Not only are you trying to learn how to code in a world where AI is pretty much taking over the space, where literally Silicon Valley is transitioning from it's all about the valuation of your company to now how you are making a change in the world of AI. Like literally, I can't even think of one company right now who is not using AI within their product. Just think who everyone's using it. If you're learning how to code in a time when AI is taking over and where all these layoffs are happening, literally as I film this, Spotify is laying off 50% of their employees and Twilio is laying off more people again for the third time within the last two years. Again, junior developers, if you're learning how to code right now, I want to give you a lot of props because it is not easy. But I think the question you want me to answer is if you're learning how to code right now, is it still worth it? And I need to be honest. I don't know. What do I mean by this? The tech landscape is changing more than ever. If you look at the use case for JavaScript, it's still the most popular language used in the world today. But compared to last year, where 65% of developers were using JavaScript in the world in 2022 and 2023, it's only 60%. And I see that going down and I see the world transitioning more from JavaScript to Python. Now, is it still worth it? When I say I don't know, I don't. But am I confident? Yes. Changes will always happen in tech. You know, I remember when I learned code, this was seven to eight years ago, jQuery was still very popular. And now who still uses jQuery? Very small companies, not the larger companies, but just because you're only learning jQuery doesn't mean that you can't get a job with it. To be honest, it's probably a 1% chance now. When you look at just the jobs that are hiring right now, very low chance, but is it still possible? Yes, but you're only making it harder for yourself. So when it comes to trying to get your foot in the door in tech, I highly suggest that you Make sure you know exactly what you're learning. And if you want to make sure you're following the correct roadmap, I have a video for that, but I also have a link in the description below that when you subscribe to my newsletter, you get access to all these pieces of content on my Notion. It's just a Notion template that gives you the developer roadmap, the JavaScript shortcuts, terminal, text editor, you name it. So check that out in the link in the description below. But as I just said, it's very important to make sure you keep up with industry trends because if you don't you will fall behind for example i know someone who's been a web engineer for about seven years full stack developer pretty much but for only solely focusing on javascript isn't good enough anymore and so i think that's very important to understand front-end developers are still very much in demand but if you have a little bit of ai skill set meaning you know how to work with llm somehow or maybe an nlp framework or nlp in general which is what's use nlp stands for natural language processing that can help you too but now in this space what's very important is being able to stand out very important which is why again i suggest everyone just dive into ai here and there doesn't mean you need to get your phd in llms or machine learning computer vision deep learning you name it doesn't mean that you don't need that to dive into ai just start building more things with it and it will go a long way you want to stand out do that and i think that's why as we dive deeper into the space of ai i want to highlight did's api it's revolutionizing the way we use ai particularly with its live streaming feature that operates at an impressive 100 frames per second it's not just about bringing digital personas to life but it's also about harnessing real-time ai capabilities for a variety of applications the beauty of did's api lies in the seamless integration making it a valuable tool for developers across various domains. Whether you're working on advanced applications or exploring new technological frontiers, this API gives you the means to incorporate sophisticated AI features in your work. For those of you venturing into the tech world or even the seasoned developers out there, DID's API presents an exciting opportunity. It allows you to explore the depths of AI technology and apply it in innovative ways. I encourage you to explore DID's API dive into the documentation, experiment with its functionalities and see how it can enhance your projects. This is an opportunity to be at the forefront of AI today, broadening your skills and pushing your limits in what you think you can achieve in your career. So check them out in the link in the description below. Now, transitioning from AI, I wanna talk about the job market today. As I mentioned earlier, there are a ton of layoffs that are happening in tech right now. 
right? Again, from Spotify to Twilio to even Amazon, it's still happening. I thought when these layoffs occurred two years ago that they would eventually stop. They slowed down a little bit, but even I was laid off. I have other friends who were laid off too, and particularly Devra, which is what I work in too. It's a scary time in tech, even for those with seven plus years of experience, even those with 10 years, 11 years, 12 years of experience of getting laid off. So now what does that mean for you who are learning how to code, trying to get your foot in the door? I think you need to have expectations of how hard it will be. With all these layoffs happening in tech right now, expect that it will take much longer than three months. Like I got a job in three months, but that's not normal, right? I don't say, that will not happen to anyone else very few people and even when this happened to me seven years ago only very few people had that happen to them and i can only speak of one person other than me that did it only one only one so i i would say don't expect to get a job in five or six months i'd say six to 12 months more realistic but even on top of that because there's so much more technologies you need to learn today compared to what i learned seven years ago i'd say what's more realistic is one to two years and you know what's sad though is that when people tell me it's going to take me two years to get a job learning after learning how to code this is a waste of time. You know, when I hear that though, I get pissed. I get pissed because you put in two years of hard work, extreme hard work. Yes, yeah, not guaranteed you won't get a job, that you will get a job. Extreme hard work, first job paying between 70 and 100K a year, depending on where you live, maybe more. After three years in tech, you're making 150,000. Let's say 130 to 150,000. After five years in tech, you're making 200K plus, depending on how bad you want it. And if you make the right moves, of course, I'm transitioning from company to company. Like, dudes, I'm not a senior developer. I never strived for it because I didn't care about the 20, 30K pay increase. I make that in one month from YouTube, right? And so that didn't matter to me. But like, as a developer advocate, I don't even code full time like I used to at these jobs. I was making $250,000 a year. Coinbase offered me $320,000 a year if I was willing to move back to San Francisco. Brex offered me $270,000 a year. Remote living in Las Vegas. But why was I able to receive this? Because I put in the hard work. So when I hear people say two years, it's not worth it. Then stop watching. It's not gonna happen to you then. With that mindset, it won't happen. But I want everyone to understand that it will take time to get a job in tech. Expect that. Next, coding boot camps. Let's talk about coding boot camps. They're very popular, but there are a lot of boot camps that don't teach the correct technologies. I want you to understand for everyone learning how to code right now and trying to get your foot in the door, coding boot camps aren't the only way. You can go self-taught or you can go back to college and get a degree in AI and machine learning, right? Like I say, and I say this all the time in my one-on-one -on -one mentorships. If you're young enough to go to college, or if you're still your late teens or early 20s and you could go to college, go that route and get your degree in AI. Get your master's. It's hard as hell, it's worth it, and it will future-proof your career, right? But coding boot camps is not the end-all be-all. Don't trust the company just because they're a coding boot camp. Do the research, check them out. But I want you to understand that just because you go to a coding boot camp does not mean that you'll get a job. Just because you go self-taught does not mean that you'll get a job. If you go to a coding boot camp and you only do what the coding boot camp tells you, you won't get a job. I don't believe that. I think you need to go above and beyond. It's the same thing for people who get the degree in computer science. I have a cousin who went to college to get a computer science degree, and guess what? He didn't get a job after. Why? He only followed the curriculum. He didn't build anything for fun outside of work. So then why would they hire him? Same thing when you're self-taught. If you only follow what these tutorials teach you, it's not enough. If you only do what Free Code Camp teaches you, it's not enough. You need to build things. You need to build things in public if possible, but you need to really, learn so don't just go to a coding boot camp don't just do an online tutorial don't just do anything just to do it thinking that's all you need no i mean i'm working on my own course it's called neverlearnagain.com and even i will say that's not enough with my own tutorials and it's not gonna be out until like january but even with my own tutorials my goal is to teach you how to stop depending on tutorial like if i'm teaching you html css my goal is to make sure you never use the html css course ever again you can do stuff without me when i teach you javascript the point of my javascript course is to make sure you're out of tutorial hell you never go back into tutorial hell or ever get into it in the first place there's no end all be all and please understand that right and so this transitions to learning tech is not easy the layoffs left and right. The moment you stop learning, you become invaluable. The reason we get paid so much without needing to be a doctor, getting a PhD, going to college for 12 years, the reason we can make $200,000, $300,000 a year is because this is a lifelong learning choice that we make. You don't just le learn like you are now, like crazy now for the next one or two years. You're continuously learning for the rest of your career in tech. It's a never ending job. Yes, you work 40, to be honest, 
40 to 60 hours a week. Yes, we get great pay. But even after all of that, maybe a micromanaging manager, which I've had many times, even when you have no work-life balance, which I've had as well, you're still expected to learn new technologies or keep up with technologies outside of work. If you don't, you get laid off, you get fired, you get replaced. And that's just what happens. So please understand that this is a life learning commitment you make when you join tech. Last but not least, junior developers, if you're watching this, if you made it to the end, do not just depend on the projects that you build through your tutorials. If that is it, you won't get hired. I guarantee you that. Very few of you will. If you only put the only projects that exist in your portfolio are from the tutorials you get from Free Code Camp, Zero to Mastery, Udemy, that's not good enough. Why? Because you're not the only person that used a tutorial. There's hundreds of other thousands of other people who made the exact same project and have the exact same thing on their portfolio. Why would I hire you if you, have to, if you look like everyone else? You need to stand out. You need to build a strong portfolio. That includes being active on GitHub. It doesn't mean you have to contribute to an open source project, but create your own repo, contribute to your own portfolio on there. Show your code, get green check boxes on your GitHub. Don't depend on these projects on these tutorials that you learn. Follow a tutorial on Hashnode, on Dev, out too, right? Get build products from there. Do whatever it takes to stand out, especially in this economy. It's not easy, but is it worth it? Hell yeah. Do I regret anything? Maybe moving into DevRel, <laughs> but I don't regret doing YouTube. I'll tell you that. But do I regret anything? No. I am happy as hell. I have zero regrets about tech. If I do it all over again, I would. I love coding. I love building things. And I love the opportunity more than anything that gives me and my family in tech. I got laid off three months ago. Fortunately, because of YouTube, I don't need to work for years. But because I love tech, I plan on getting back into it very soon. Anyway, I love y'all for watching. I'll see y'all next time.